and welcome. I'm Erica Salee of True Synergy and nice to be back with you for another installment of the True Woman series. We have yet another dynamic woman whose story is very near and dear to my heart. I'm pleased to introduce to you my mom, Phyllis Kelly. Hi. Hello everyone. Welcome and thank you. You're very welcome. So take us back to the early morning hours of May 4th, uh, 2013. Well, first of all, I would like to give God glory mm. and honor and praise because if it were not for Him, I would not be here at Absolutely. this moment. Absolutely. I unfortunately had an incident where I passed out mm -hmm. and um, was taken to the hospital by ambulance and ended up being in the Bayview um, John Hopkins Hospital. I had no idea what took place until later. I realized that at that time I had an aneurysm, which they call is some other medical terminology where there was a slight stroke mm -hmm. involved. Mm -hmm. And I was unaware of anything that took place, all the tests. I do know that I was in critical care for 14 days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. During that time, I experienced a lot of negative vibes from the enemy mm -hmm. was telling me I was not going to make it, mm -hmm. but God was telling me, you will make it. And it's interesting because, I, you know, I think back to that time and, you know, just for people who may not uh, really understand in terms of what actually took place from a medical standpoint, um, there is a condition called arteriovenous malformation. Um, where the blood vessels through the course of birth or at some other point in life um, get twisted and they burst. And so in your case, that is exactly um, what happened. And so with you being in the critical care unit for 14 days, um, unable to communicate other than squeezing our hands, and we were grateful for that, um, describe, if you can, what you were experiencing in that subconscious state. And I think you just alluded to it um, just with your the spiritual struggle that you mm -hmm. felt was, was taking place. Can you explain to us what that was for you? Um, when you give a testimony about what took place in your life, especially if it was something of that nature, mm -hmm. your testimony is to give God glory mm -hmm. and it is to strengthen those who are relational to let them see God is real yes and of those who don't know him it's like God has to be somewhere mm -hmm. because I was struggling I actually got to a point where my body felt heavy mm -hmm. and it also felt like I was leaving here mm -hmm. but God was with me because he kept telling me you shall live mm -hmm. and not die mm -hmm. I am with you. But then the devil was trying to tell me I was not going to make it. Mm -hmm. But because God, that light overpowered mm -hmm. that darkness, I knew mm -hmm. I was going to be okay. Mm -hmm. I just mm -hmm. knew it. Mm -hmm. Because he kept saying, you shall live and not die. Mm -hmm. By my stripes you're healed. But we have to make sure that when we say it, we have to believe it. Mm -hmm. We can't just quote it. But I knew that God was with me the whole mm -hmm time and he had a network of people that were there with me as mm -hmm. well and I certainly can um, say that um, so many people were sending uh, well wishes and prayers and um, very important for us at the time and any family who is dealing with um, such a traumatic incident to have that that network of support so at this stage um, this was back in May and so here we are now in September and so now, what prognosis um, are the doctors giving uh, in terms of where you go from this point in terms of, of your healing? Well, I recently went back to take another angiogram mm -hmm. to compare with the very first mm -hmm. one that was taken. And the doctor said that there was a little bit of, they couldn't even explain to me what it was. Mm -hmm. But in the in term of them trying to explain to me, I still heard whose report mm -hmm. are you going to believe. Mm -hmm. So at this point, I have been just feeling great. Mm -hmm. But I have to also use wisdom mm -hmm. 
to understand if my body does not feel right, I have to do something. Mm -hmm. So I have decided at this point, um, they suggested going back again to do additional readings, which would take this uh, instrument further up my neck, mm -hmm. or I could wait it out mm -hmm. and go back and do another angiogram. Mm -hmm. But at this point, I do not want to have all the radiation mm -hmm. in my body. Mm -hmm. Because we have doctor friends that said he thought that doing five or six examinations in one week was just mm -hmm. too much radiation. Mm -hmm. So right now, I'm just trusting God. And mm -hmm. even though I know I trust him, I still have to use wisdom. Mm -hmm. And keep. I just have to watch my body mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to make sure that all is well. And it's interesting because, you know, when any of us um, faces an illness, uh, whether it's to this degree or um, something else that may be a little less minor or even more severe, um, you know, we always want to be able to go to the doctor, have them diagnose it, give us the treatment and say, okay, this is going to fix it. Um, but in your case, they haven't really given those definitive right. words. They, they've given options, and with each of the options, there is risk. Mm -hmm. um, to do nothing is also a risk. Right, exactly. Um, and I have to, to say, um, and, and I want to share this because I want people to really understand um, the magnitude of what we as a family uh, dealt with. Um, the doctor's appointment that you spoke about um, a couple of minutes ago um, we're sitting there together, you're sitting in front of me, and I'm listening to the doctor, and I wanted that definitive answer about what we could do to fix this. And as he was talking, and I didn't hear that, I got tears in my eyes because I thought, I just want an answer. I just want a treatment. I just want a fix. And you stood there, and you were um, unmoved. Um, there were no tears in your eyes. There was a sense of confidence in realizing what was being said, but also trusting and knowing. And it was at that moment when I looked at you, I realized that I actually got a glimpse of what faith looked like. Mm -hmm. And so can you tell us about, you know, what it is that in the face of not having the answer to fix, um, that is, is really sustaining you. And I know we've said it, but I want um, folks to hear really what, what is the core of, of what you believe is, is sustaining you through this difficult time that, that we've been through. I know that God has shown himself mighty mm -hmm. on my behalf. I thought I knew how much he loved me, mm -hmm. but during this whole time, his presence is so close to me. He never left me. Mm -hmm. And when you quote a scripture, you have to not just quote it, look at you have to really believe it. And the whole experience, I have never felt him so close to me. Mm -hmm. And he's still telling me the scripture in Psalm 118, 17 says, you should not die, mm -hmm. but live and declare the works of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Because you know, as a believer, if he wanted to take me, he would have. Mm -hmm. But there is something that he want me to do. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing part of it now, just sharing. Mm -hmm. I just believe from the depth of my heart mm -hmm. that there's a purpose mm -hmm. for all of this. And with me personally, his love that he has for me, mm -hmm. I cannot even... I can't even begin to explain it mm -hmm. because he, he's so, he's a wonder to my soul and I just trust him. Mm -hmm. I believe his word. Mm -hmm. I know his word will not come back void. Mm -hmm. and he's a man that he cannot lie. Mm -hmm. I just believe him. Mm -hmm. So whose report am I? And I know I have to use wisdom. Mm -hmm. So this has also made me take a look at my body, mm. pay more attention mm -hmm. to what is going on. And so in what ways have you been more in tune to, to your body? I have been more conscious of my salt mm. intake. Mm -hmm. I've been making sure my pressure 
I check it twice a day. Because it's important that at this juncture to my, keep your blood pressure at exactly. a, a level that is healthy right. um, and not elevated. So, okay. And then I know that I have to get back into my regimen of my weight concern mm -hmm. because I had gotten off track. But I As have we to all have at times. Get, get back on that. But the main thing is just I will not go to sleep. Unless I check my pressure, mm, mm -hmm. just to make sure, and I, I'm just more aware and conscious of what I'm taking in my body, mm -hmm. and just how I'm feeling, mm -hmm. and just to be I, at this point, being in critical care for 14 days, mm -hmm. coming from there, going into rehab mm -hmm. or physical therapy, and then home. Yeah. Nobody but God can do that. Absolutely. And so it's important uh, for a couple reasons. Um, you know, we have to be in tune to our bodies, whether you've had something traumatic as this happen or just in general, because it's important to watch the weight, to watch the blood pressure and, and our salt intake. So that's just an important message within and of itself. Um, but you, you said something very interesting, and, and I know firsthand what... Um, the situation looked like when things uh, initially happened but to see you here now um, recognizing that you had the AVM or arterial venous malformation you had a minor stroke um, which did not uh, debilitate your ability to walk um, your ability to speak your so cognition um, and now sitting here so um, you truly are, in my eyes, uh, one, an example of what faith looks like because you've not been shaken by it, even not having a definitive answer from mm -hmm. the doctor as to how to fix, um, and truly a miracle with all of the things that, that you've experienced. So I personally am grateful to even be sitting here um, with you to share this story. Um, so, you have a birthday coming up this month. Yes. I'm very excited about that. Um, what will be different for this birthday, if anything? Well, it will be different to the point that I know that God's mercy and His grace brought me this far. Mm -hmm. And I will look at it as being ever so grateful to God mm -hmm. because it could have been different. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, and I'm just going, my relationship with him has intensified and having another year, I'm just, I can't even, I'm in awe. Mm -hmm. I'm ever so grateful to God for just allowing me mm -hmm. to see another year. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm just grateful. And I will say this, um, I echo that. I truly am grateful uh, as well to be able to have you celebrating another birthday this month. Um, and I will say that, you know, no matter what anyone who watches this video believes, whether you um, believe in God or you believe in a God or you, you have some other spiritual um, foundation, it truly is remarkable to know that here we sit and we can witness um, a miracle here in flesh. Um, so I just want people to recognize that we are all miracles and mm -hmm. miracles are still happening every single day. So no matter what we may be facing, no matter what challenges we're dealing with, there is still the ability for a miracle to be performed in that situation mm -hmm. and in each of our lives. And so I thank you for just sharing that with us. Um, and hopefully someone has um, received it and have been touched by it. So as a thank you, um, I do want to present to you um, a sponsor gift. Thank so you. we have included uh, in here a basket of uh, beverages that are probably something that will complement the regimen that you are currently under in terms of your um, weight and just watching your intake of, of things that you um, you eat and you drink. Mm -hmm. So we hope that you uh, enjoy this and um, we thank you again for your time. So if you would like to find out more information about True Synergy, we ask that you visit us at www.truesynergy.org. 
Until next time, be well.